Hello and welcome to my channel, I am Akasha Shell. This is Akasha Love and today I wanted to um, talk to you about this amazing woman called Matahari. Matahari. So this is my portrait of Matahari. This is the original photo that I used to make this portrait. And who is Matahari? Well, she was a Dutch woman. She was born um, named Margareta Zelle in 1876 in Holland. And uh, she was born into a reasonably um, well-off family. Her father was a hat maker in, um, I think, in Amsterdam. And in the late 1900s. So she had a happy early life, but then um, by the time she was 13, so in 1889, her father actually became bankrupt and her parents' marriage broke up. And then just two years later, when she was 15 in 1891, her mother died and she was actually sent to live with um, a family a relative, an uncle. So initially she trained as um, a kindergarten teacher, but she was actually taken away from the study for being a kindergarten teacher because the headmaster of the school where she was practicing was apparently flirting with her too much. So her uncle took her out of this um, school and away from this um, career as a kindergarten teacher. So then the um, interesting thing about her is that at age 18, she answered a personals ad in the Dutch newspaper placed by a Dutchman who was at that time living in the Dutch East Indies, which is the island of Java. So Indonesia was a Dutch colony at the time in the 1800s. He was working for the Dutch colonial administration in Java and he was looking for a wife. So she answered this ad aged just 18, having her family already basically fallen apart. Her parents divorced, her mother, re her mother died, her father remarried. So she was left at 18 to kind of seek her fortune in the world. And she found it via this um, newspaper ad. So she answered the newspaper ad. She met this man um, in Holland. He came from the Dutch East Indies. And she met him, Rudolf. He was an army captain, Rudolf MacLeod. She met him and they decided to marry. And then he, she traveled with him to Java in 1895 so it was obviously a huge transition to move from holland to the island of java in indonesia and unfortunately the marriage was not so happy it um he her husband rudolph turned out to be a bit of an alcoholic and abusive and he also kept concubines on the side. So he had some Javanese girlfriends on the side. So they had two children, but um, by the late 1800s, the marriage was falling apart. And actually one of their, both of their children in 1899 um, fell ill and her youngest child, her son, actually died apparently from syphilis that maybe was given to her son through her husband. So this woman is actually the cover girl, the cover woman of my universe calendar, which is a calendar where I have drawn portraits of 12 amazing women from the past and the present. 
um, who will feature in this calendar for 2024. And the idea is that they are an inspiration for you, especially if you're a woman, to really um, reach inside of yourself, connect with your own courage in taking the next step in your life, whatever it is. So the idea is that this calendar throughout 2024 inspires you to be the most awesome and amazing woman that you can be. So a little bit more about Mata Hari. In 1897, when she was still in uh, Java, she took on this name of Mata Hari, which means sun in the Malay language, the Indonesian language. And she escaped a bit from her abusive marriage via um, diving into the study of um, Javanese dance and Javanese culture. So she became very immersed in dance and culture. She learned the local Javanese dances and she also was really inspired by the Javanese costumes, which are very, very elaborate, like all these jewels on the head and, and the body, the brassia you see here in this portrait. So when her marriage eventually broke up um, in the early 1900s, I think 1902, they um, separated officially. She decided to move back to Holland. I think she took her daughter with her back to Holland. And then finally, they were divorced in 1906. So relocating from Java to Europe in 1903, she actually moved to Paris, where she started to pursue. Um, first, she actually was uh, a performing as a horse rider in a circus. Obviously, she was quite an athletic woman. And then in 1904, she started to take to the stage in Paris in theatres like the Moulin Rouge, performing her um, exotic dance, which was inspired by the Javanese dancers. And she became very quickly famous for this dance because apparently it was not so much her dance skill. Apparently she was not super skilled in dance but her sexuality, her sensuality, which came through, that really attracted people to her. And the routine of this dance was that she would um, start off clothed and then eventually end up with no clothes except um, this brassiere and the headdress and the rest, she was naked. So this gained her um, considerable fame and attention in Paris and then also in Europe. And she got very, very famous for the next kind of six or seven years until um, in 1910 or 1911, I think she started putting on some weight and she started to lose a little bit her um, public for her dances. And then at this time, she kind of switched careers, transitioned into um, starting to work as a courtesan, which is basically, um, yeah, an escort, a well-paid escort for um, rich men in Europe and including a lot of aristocrats, royal family, um, people in positions of power, heads of companies. Um, in various different uh, European countries. She moved between Spain, France, um, Holland, England. And then in, um, in during the Second World War, she was already a very prominent public figure, let's say, and well known in um, these um, upper echelons of the society. And she was apparently approached by um, German military and asked to act as a spy for the Germans in France. Whether this is really true or not, it's really hard to know. She denied um, that she was a spy. But later, um, basically in 1917, towards the end of the war, 
when it looked like the French were losing the war, the, the French um, military had her arrested and charged her with being a German spy. So she um, was imprisoned for about six months um, under arrest with this charge of espionage, which she denied the whole time. She said, and I quote here, during her trial, she said, a harlot, yes, but a traitress, never. And she maintained during this trial also that she really had a love for France, her, which was her adoptive country, effectively. Why would she ever betray um, her own adoptive country, which she loved and had found her success as a dancer in? So despite her protestations, just despite her defence, it looks like the French military were determined to um, basically find her guilty. And um, really, it's there are many sources suggest that she was um, essentially a scapegoat for the French army, who at that time were losing the war and needed somebody to blame for this. So she was um, charged with spying and accused of uh, causing the death of at least 50,000 soldiers based on um, her apparent work as a German spy which she denied. So unfortunately for her, it seems like um, there was nobody that really came out in her defense, even though she was well connected with um, European royalty and aristocracy, wealthy, important people all around Europe. It seems that nobody actually came to um, support her and defend her in her hour of greatest need. And uh, so the French ended up convicting her of um, espionage and they executed her in um, 1917. A French um, military firing squad executed her. So um, although a tragic end, I find the story of Matahari to be really um, inspiring in terms of uh, a woman in the early 1900s who um, first at the age of 18 really follows her desire for adventure and travel, answering this personal's ad, travels across the world to a new country, new language, new culture, which she dives headfirst into learning Indonesian, learning the dances of the local people, and then um, in suffering a, a, a difficult and abusive marriage, she manages to extract herself from that, gains a divorce, and then becomes an independent woman and uh, an artist, following her own heart's calling to become an artist in the early 1900s when it was really very unusual first to divorce at all and then to actually be um, an independent woman financing yourself based on your own artistic talents that really shows um, such incredible self-belief strength courage um, and just guts and determination so uh, I think she is uh, a really good role model for um, women around the world nowadays, where now we do have the well, a lot more um, easy access to actually becoming independent and to following our artistic dreams, which even though it's easier now than before, still is uh, a difficult path to follow. So the legacy of Matahari is that, um, so the first film about her biopic was made in 1920. And subsequently, actually, there have been 13 films made either directly about Matahari or with her as one of the main characters. And the most recent um, TV series that featured her was um, 
a Russian Portuguese series made in 2017. As well as these 13 films um, featuring her, there's also been five stage musicals made about her life. There's been two songs at Eurovision, one in 1976 by Norway and another one in 2021 by Azerbaijan. So she's had a really lasting legacy and people obviously all around the world have been fascinated by her story. One of the probably most famous um, movies made about her was a Hollywood movie in 1931 called Matahari featuring the huge uh, German star Greta Garbo. So what can we learn from this woman Matahari? I think we can learn really um, about how to really create your life based on your own dreams, about how to make your life into your work of art. And she was an artist right through and through, right um, from the beginning. And she actually, it was the trend at the time to even invent a backstory for yourself as a performing artist. And her backstory was that she was a Javanese princess um, discovered in Java uh, and brought to Europe and where she could display the talents and the culture of her ancestors that was all of course made up except the part that she did actually live in java and learn these javanese dances there but she was not javanese and she was not a princess but all part of the magic and mystery of um creating your your life as your art you kind of make yourself into um your whatever story that that you want. So I find her to be a really inspiring woman. Um, and especially I'm inspired by her courage to follow her dreams, her courage to be um, divorced, her courage to leave her husband and her courage to become a dancer on the stages of Paris and in Europe. Her really courage to be herself in all of her magic, mystery, um, sensuality, sexuality, um, artistry. Yeah, I think she is a really good role model. And of course, um, we don't want to be um, end up executed, but um, it's also important to note that even in her, her execution um, which many suggest that she was basically scapegoated she was defiant until the end and she refused to wear the um, blindfold and she um, really stood up in the face of her um, ex uh, executioners and looked them straight in the eye and was really not afraid right up until the end of her life so that is a bit of the story of Matahari, who is the feature woman cover girl for my universe calendar for 2024, which will be coming out soon. If you'd like to be notified for when it's available for purchase, feel free to sign up to my website, which I will put down here. So lots of love um, from me.